Hello. Good day to all my students. Today we are here to continue on the chapter Carbon Compounds where we will be discussing part 15 of this chapter which is the last part of Carbon Compounds. The subtopic that I am going to discuss today with students is mostly on polymers and natural rubbers. Now let's start. What are polymers? Before we go into the main discussion which is natural rubber, students have to understand the meaning of polymers. Polymers are small units or molecules called monomers which are combined or linked together to make up large molecules. If students can remember correctly, ethene goes through polymerization. Polymerization of ethene does get rid of the double molecule carbon-carbon covalent bond between the carbon-carbon atoms. So that is the reason why in ethene or alkene mainly polymerization happens. So the small molecule of ethene for instance, for example, small molecules of ethene combine together to produce a polymer called polyethene. And if students can see the difference of the structural formula of ethene, monomer ethene will lose its carbon-carbon double bond towards polymerization. So students can see that polymers of polyethene does not contain double bond. So in fact that is the main reason why majority of the molecules goes through polymerization. Now here teacher would like to highlight Example of natural polymers. So we have two types of polymers here which are natural polymers and synthetic polymers. So example of synthetic polymers are nylon, polythene, PVC, uh, polystyrene. These are all synthetic polymers produced by human beings for our uh, human usage. And here, I would like to highlight on few examples of natural polymers. So, starch, monomer, starch is a polymer and monomer of the polymer starch is complex carbohydrate. Second example, protein is an example of natural polymer and the monomer is called amino acids. And lastly, the main discussion of our today part 15 is actually on natural rubber. So natural rubber is indeed a natural polymer and the monomer is called isoprene. Now why human loves the properties? What does, does human love about the property of rubber? Rubber, the main property that we love about rubber is its elasticity. Natural rubber is elastic. Is water repellent and also cannot conduct electricity thanks for being a covalent compound. So the elasticity plays an important part for the usage of rubber by mankind. Now let's go to two natural, two uh, uh, condition of natural rubbers. First is coagulate and decoagulate. So, what happens is, I would like students to know that natural rubber called latex. Mainly, natural rubber are called latex. We call it latex. So, latex is the liquid form. Latex is the liquid form of the rubber which comes out from the rubber tree. So, when the bark of the rubber is taken or uh, taken away or this one, taken away. So, you can find that the rubber tree will produce a white liquid called latex. So that latex is actually natural rubber. Now, if you want to coagulate, coagulate means that you want to make the rubber. You don't want the rubber in a form of liquid. Now, what do we do is in 
order to make the rubber coagulate, we can add acids, which contains hydrogen ion. Okay, forming acid can be added. Okay, can be added, but try not to use strong acids because it's corrosive. Huh? <coughs> it will uh, totally disturb, disturb the uh, molecules of rubber. So we use formic acid, ethanoic acid. So for why? Because acids contains hydrogen ion. Okay, so acids contains hydrogen ion. So since it contains hydrogen ion, now let's see the significance of hydrogen ion to rubber molecule. Now what I have drawn here are actually example of rubber molecules in form of liquid. I want students to know that the Red marks that I have drawn here are actually the negative particle of the rubber molecule. Now, the rubber molecules are actually protected by a protein membrane. Rubber molecule is actually protected by a protein membrane with rubber molecule inside. And these rubber molecules don't get tangled with each other, tangled with each other thanks to the presence of negative ions. So, students know that negative ion repel each other. So, during liquid form, the negative ion around the membrane, protein membrane of rubber molecules will help it stay in liquid form. But when hydrogen ion in form of acid are added, what does it do is it will neutralize. Neutralize the negative particles. Neutralize the negative particles. Thus, the membrane disrupts. Disrupts. So, what do you mean by membrane disrupts? The membrane will break. Why? Because the presence of hydrogen ion will neutralize the negative particles. And now, since it's neutral, the protein membrane becomes weaker. When the protein membranes become weaker, the membrane, protein membranes will disrupt. Okay, sort of break. So, when it breaks, all the rubber molecules will get tangled with each other. So, that is the reason why rubber, natural rubber will harden or coagulate when we add acids. Thanks to the presence of hydrogen ion, hydrogen ion will neutralize the negative particles. It will weaken the membrane, the protein membrane. So, the protein membrane which is protecting the rubber molecules become weaker, become weaker. Then, the rubber molecules will start to tangle with each other. The moment the rubber molecules tangle with each other, they are called coagulating. Now, sometimes, Presence of, now we don't add acids, but naturally rubber molecule can coagulate thanks to the presence of bacterias. Bacterias goes through respiration which produces lactic acid. Teacher repeat, if we don't add acids and we want the rubber to coagulate naturally, that can happen with the help of bacteria. Bacteria will go through respiration. When respiration happens, acid called lactic acid will be produced. Lactic acid also contains hydrogen ion. This will help to neutralize the negative particles around the, pro uh, around the protein membrane and the rubber molecules. And it will also weaken the protein membranes and coagulation will happen as usual. But the only difference is when we add acid, it happens faster. When we leave it to nature to coagulate naturally, it will take maybe more than 5 to 6 hours for the rubber to coagulate. Okay, so please remember, even though we don't add acid, thanks to the presence of bacteria through respiration, Lactic acid produced and this will help to coagulate the natural rubber. Now, opposite of coagulate is decoagulate. 
So in order to decoagulate the natural rubber, that means we want the rubber to be in more uh, in a liquid form back, we can add alkali, which the hydroxide the hydroxide ions in ammonia, for instance, hydroxide ions in ammonia for for uh, ammonium hydroxide and uh, ammonia can help to neutralize sorry not neutralize will decoagulate that means make the rubber into um, liquid form again so please remember in order to coagulate we can add acids in order to decoagulate that means we want it to be in a form of liquid back again we can add alkali and let's go to two types of rubbers which are very well known so rubber con have two types of rubber which are vulcanized and unvulcanized rubber teacher repeat we have two types of rubber from natural rubber which is vulcanized and unvulcanized rubber now what do we mean by unvulcanized rubber unvulcanized rubber is technically natural rubber not added anything but vulcanized rubber is rubber mixed with sulfur atoms and heated vulcanized rubber is where the natural rubber are added with sulfur atom and heated now why it is uh, natural vulcanized rubber is more popular con uh, uh, compared to natural rubber now what happens is natural rubber is not strong compared to un uh, sorry natural rubber vulcanized rubber Unvulcanized rubber is not, is not as strong as vulcanized rubber. What happens is, for instance, I want students to imagine this is isoprene molecule. Can you see the double bond? There are few double bonds uh, in, okay, double, uh, in natural rubber. Okay, there will be few double bonds in natural rubber. Only few double bonds will be missing towards the production of natural rubber as polymer. Now, when we heat... Okay, when we heat this isoprene molecule, uh, this polymer of natural rubber, these are isoprene molecules, isoprene molecules, which make up the natural rubber. Now, when we heat it with sulfur, heat with sulfur atoms, we can find that the sulfur atom get rid of the double bond and also forms a chain, link with a chain. Okay, so this is what we call by sulfur, cross link of sulfur atoms. This will form a cross link between carbon and sulfur atom between the molecules. So what happens is thanks to the presence of sulfur which produce a cross link between the carbon atoms, we can say that vulcanized rubber is more harder and stronger compared to unvulcanized rubber which are natural rubber. Now let's discuss on what are the Difference between vulcanized and unvulcanized rubber. Now, unvulcanized rubber are rubber which are not added with sulfur atom. Vulcanized rubber are added with sulfur atom. So, for further, we say vulcanized rubber has sulfur atom and unvulcanized rubber no sulfur atom. So that when teacher students are watching my video, they can understand the difference. Okay. Now, so let's go to strength. Okay, vulcanized rubber is stronger thanks to the presence of cross link. Okay, cross link between the sulfur and the carbon atom. So, this is less stronger. Okay, so stickiness, less sticky. Sticky in the sense of Vulcanized rubber becomes, does not melt faster. That means it does not have the proper, the, the problem with natural rubber, it becomes sticky when it is exposed to high temperature. Okay, so rubber will become sticky when it is exposed to high temperature. So that is the reason why vulcanized rubber with the presence of sulfur atom becomes less sticky. So this is sticky. When especially exposed to high temperatures. Now, elasticity. More elastic. Yeah. 
less elastic. Okay, so resistant to temperature, more resistant to temperature. To temperature. So this is less resistant. To temperature, especially high temperature. So that is the reason why this will be the main attribute why it is less stronger because we can't manipulate natural rubber under uh, stronger heat temperature. So that is the reason why vulcanized rubber is more preferred compared to natural rubber which is technically unvulcanized rubber because cannot withstand, vulcanized rubber can withstand high temperature, unvulcanized rubber, natural rubber cannot withstand high temperature. Okay, now let's go to resistant, more resistant to chemical. To chemical, this is important. Why? Because we would like to add chemicals according to the need of the usage. What is the usage of the particular rubber? So when we add a certain chemical to it, it might change the bit of the property of the natural rubber. So, if natural rubber, unfortunately, unvulcanized rubber, natural rubber cannot, it is not resistant to chemical. So, less resistant to chemical. To chemical. Okay, so less resistant to chemical. So, these are the main characteristics of comparison between vulcanized rubber with sulfur and an unvulcanized rubber without sulfur atom. So, this uh, question comes out a lot for essay and also structure questions for students. Now, I hope we students can understand part 15 of my video. So, teacher have done and covered all the subtopics needed for carbon compounds for students' reference. I hope students can watch my, all my videos in carbon compounds and understand and learn about this chapter. Till then, let's meet in our next video. Till then, see you all. Thank you for watching.